How does Wade Young train? A couple of things that I picked up from his COVID training. Uh, number one, works on his bike skills a lot to improve his efficiency on the bike to be able to use less energy for the longer enduro events. The second thing that he does, higher intensity training for shorter enduro events. So events like Erzberg where they're only about four hours, he'll be working on more high intensity training. The third thing that he does is when he's working towards longer events like Romaniacs, where he's spending about eight hours plus on the bike for six days in a row. He works on doing more endurance fitness work. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Andrew Hammer. I've worked with hundreds of riders of racers from around the world to get them race fit and race ready. Wade also divides up his day doing two things. Generally in the morning, will be either gym work or long distance uh, cardio work or endurance work, depending on the event he's working towards. And then in the afternoon, he'll get out on the bike and go and ride for a few hours doing some sort of hard enduro working on his skills. Now, taking that information, that sounds great for him because that's what he does for a living. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, how do I take that information and apply it to my riding so I can get better, but I'm not a factory rider and I've got to do something else for 40, 50, 60 hours a week apart from just ride and train. So my recommendation is you break your training down into three areas. Number one, strength work. So the reason you want to get stronger is the stronger you can get yourself, the lighter the bike will feel. And the lighter the bike feels, the less energy you'll use while you're riding. The less energy you use while you're riding, the further you're gonna increase your stamina and your endurance for longer distance events. Anywhere from two, three, four hours plus. Movements that you can use. Use things like back squats, like barbell deadlifts, barbell bench press, barbell bent over rows, barbell overhead press. Great starting point for building a great base of strength with multi-joint movements, which have the best transfer over to the bike. Second thing is your cardio. There's two types of cardio. There's your short distance cardio and your long distance cardio. The way you train your short distance cardio is by using interval training. Short, sharp bursts of high intensity training. What does this look like? You could jump on the rowing machine and do a minute on, a minute off for 10 minutes. The goal of this is to go really, really hard for the minute on and then to rest and do nothing for the minute off to make sure that you're recovered as you can be to put in a good intense effort then for the next round. The goal of these is not about doing a lot of work, it's about doing a lot of work in a very short period of time, which increases the intensity. What we're doing here is we're replicating, say, a hard section out on the hard enduro track. Let's say you've got a really tough hill climb, that hill climb is gonna require 100% effort and it's gonna cause a lot of fatigue. But once you get past that hill climb, you might have a fire trail or you might have a little bit of a break before you get to the next section, we want your body to be, learn to be able to go hard for short periods of time and then recover really fast and to be able to go hard again. So that's number one intervals. The other cardio system is your long distance cardio system. The way that you train this is do, through doing longer distance training. So it could be going for a half hour or an hour cycle. It could be getting on the rowing machine for an hour. It could be going swimming for half an hour. Uh, it could be going for a walk even or a jog. Anywhere you, where you've got consistent movement at say 60% of your max heart rate for half an hour to an hour or even longer. Now, how do you apply this knowledge and how do you apply this training so you can actually fit it into your week and still have a life outside of that, still be able to go to work, still be able to spend time with your family, still be able to get your bike ready, but at the same time still progress with your riding. So your strength work, you wanna be strength training three times per week. Okay, three sessions is enough if you're using the multi-joint movements like I just said, the squats, the deadlifts, overhead presses, bent over rows. That should make up majority of your training. Now, how do you train the cardio side? We wanna make sure we're doing interval training at least three times per week, okay? Anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, depending on your level of fitness. Could be on the row machine, could be on an assault runner, could be on an exercise bike, uh, could be doing intervals down at the park. Now, our longer distance cardio, there's two ways that we can train this. Number one, we can train it during the week and you can do the longer distance cardio pieces. My recommendation, because time is usually tight during the week, is we wanna get our longer distance cardio work done on the bike. So instead of trying to do interval work on the bike, or instead of trying to get strong on the bike on the weekends, work on doing your longer distance cardio work on the bike. So what that means is every time you go for a ride, go for a ride for an hour, for two hours, for three hours, for four hours, because that's gonna, number one, build up that longer distance cardio system, but number two, it's also gonna build up your bike time a lot quicker. If you're only going riding once a week, we can't afford to have that ride made up of types of riding that aren't really gonna progress your riding and make you a better rider. We need to make sure we're getting the most bang from your buck from the time that you spend on the bike, which means when you do have the time on the bike, we need to make sure we're spending majority of that time actually riding and actually getting bike time.